Hi everyone. Uh, I hope you're all well and uh, staying safe and healthy. I just thought I would jump on tonight and do like a little mini quilt session together um, to help keep our spirits up. And if you've been kind of trapped inside, uh, you know, sewing by yourself or, you know, you're trapped at home with your kids doing all kinds of things, I thought it might be a nice little uh, relief. Um, and if you're wanting to learn how to sew now, maybe you have like a little bit of extra time on your hands, um, this might be helpful for you too. So here we go. So I don't have a ton of time probably till um, people realize I'm missing. So I'm just going to do a really quick uh, little four patch. Here's what I did earlier today just with like some scrap fabrics. If you need fabrics, I have these fun little kits that you can get in my Etsy shop. And they have enough to make um, four different little four patch coasters, um, complete with batting and um, little backing squares. And uh, they will come with a little direction sheet in case you need that too. All the fabrics I'm using tonight are out of my still massive uh, scrap piles. Um, I usually try to stay on top of it by cutting them into usable sizes, um, but so here are two um, three and a half inch squares, but I actually have these longer pieces that are seven inches. So to save myself, I'm gonna sew the. I would say my biggest tip is to look at where you're feeding the fabric and lining it up and try to keep that consistent. The needle will go up and down and sew your fabric. You don't need to watch that. You need to watch what you're using as your lining guide for what is going to make your straight edge and focus on keeping it straight against that. I have just notches on my feet. Um, they sell all kinds of feet. If you have, um, you can check your personal machine. And now I'm going to cut these apart. Okay, I just took that over and gave it a press. And now I'm going to slice down through here. Because that's the seam where they were held together. And then I'm going to trim them into the three and a half inch squares. And then I'll press again. So I'm just lining up with um, my straight edge there and I also like to check and line my ruler up with the seam because I'm assuming that I did a good job uh, sewing a straight seam. And maybe not be so rough so that it stays like lined up on top of each other but like I said I'm a little bit going quick. But if you don't make uh, a lot of things, certainly slow down and take your time. And you, if you can find more time to not feel rushed. Now we're going to give them a press toward the dark side. On this one, we'll go toward the green and that will create um, a ridge with our fabrics. So when we put them together, it'll create, I don't know if you can see that, like there'll be a little tiny lip and we'll nest them together and that's what gives you those really crisp middle points. If you are using directional fabric, you might want to pay attention to that when you sew them so that when you flip stuff and make the corners go opposite of one another that you don't have things upside down that you didn't want upside down or make life easier on yourself and get these tossed prints that it doesn't matter what's up and down. And then you can see how we have the little ridges and we're gonna just tuck those together. See how they create a little shelf and nest into one another? And then you can put a pin right there to hold it too and then when you sew along this seam, they're nice and tight together and that makes a really crisp center mark. It's 
See? Ta-da! Nice and crisp. We'll iron that flat. And we did our four square. Number two. So there you go. If you were going to make a larger quilt, you would just kind of repeat that, I don't know, hundreds of times um, until you made the size that you want um, and just working out in rows and columns um, like that. But uh, for the sake of finishing up a cute little quick project, I am going to get some batting and backing and finish these up as little, um, I don't know, large coasters. So I would say um, for anybody that's um, interested in getting into quilting or sewing and you thought, oh my gosh, uh, it's too complicated. I think you can see from that it isn't. The only thing it takes is patience and a little bit of attention to detail and make sure that you get one of these guys for when you make mistakes. Because even people that make quilts all the time, we still use our seam rippers. To properly finish this, um, I just have some batting scraps from another quilt that I cut off and then I will lay this on there and just kind of leave a little room around the edge for if it moves, although with like a small uh, little guy you shouldn't need too much, but if you were doing a larger quilt you would want to leave several inches, maybe three to four inches around, along the outside just because the fabric tends to move a little bit when it's getting pressed through the foot. Although a walking foot definitely helps with that because it has feeders on the top and it will feed from underneath of your machine uh, like it normally does. So that definitely helps minimize movement. But, um, you know, with this little one, I probably won't even replace the foot. I'll just use the regular foot that's on there and uh, just take my time. See, I told you I was going to go fast. Good enough. <laughs> Sorry for the pause. Um, it always takes me a long time to figure out what I'm willing to put on the back of things. Um, I don't know why. It's like my um, hardest part of quilting for me is figuring out what to put on the back of stuff. Um, I don't know. Anyways, so this is really like how I'm gonna measure this. Good enough. Again, I cut two pieces at the same time by folding it over. So now I have two backs. I'm going to give these a little press because they're a little wrinkly. Throw a couple pins in here and stitch a little quilting in that. Oh yeah, and I realized earlier that my needle was skipping a bunch of stitches. So I think I need to replace it. So I'm going to do that quick too. Just use a little screwdriver. Could you see that? Hold on. So your needle will have kind of like a little round part and a little flat edge. Do you see how it has two different edges? So usually the flat edge kind of goes toward the back and it'll slide up in a shaft there and then you'll tighten it in place with a screwdriver. Or throw your screwdriver on the floor, you could do that too. <laughs> so because I'm very clumsy, I do a lot of it just with my hands and then I will take the screwdriver at the end and just give it a nice tighten. And there you go, now fresh needle. We should be good, hopefully. And I'm gonna rethread my machine with some light blue thread and start stout sewing. And if you're wondering, Janice, why light blue thread? It's because it's the closest thing that I had that had a bobbin wound. And when time is of the essence, you just don't have time to wind bobbins. So we have to go with what's available. And if you don't have a automatic needle threader on your sewing machine, what are you doing with your life? You need that thing, it is great. Okay, so again, right here, I'm just gonna pick a little notch on the foot of my um, sewing machine here, and I'm just gonna sew, lining it up with a crease there on my fabric, and that'll give me a nice, straight quilt line.
there you go. Some quilting. You can do you. Uh, and there's the back, which I think came out really nice. And then all I have to do to finish is trim around it and add some binding. Um, so I'm not going to show that in this video because I'm definitely out. Thanks for sewing and quilting with me. It was kind of fun to talk to adults um, that I'm not married to. <laughs> Even if you weren't talking back this time. Maybe next time. You could do more than that if you wanted to. Um, if you were working with bigger squares or a larger area, you might want to. If you really like the look of heavy quilting, you can, of course, add as much as you want. That's one of the great things about quilting. Um, there's no rules of time. It's getting really close to bedtime, but I'm going to quilt my other one really quick. And uh, maybe I'll hop on tomorrow and do a little binding tutorial. All right, good night. I hope that cheered everybody up.